Okay. All right. So if you have your Course in Miracles, you can turn to Chapter 17, Section... Hold on. Let me make sure I'm the right... Um, chapter 17, Section 2. Chapter 17, Section 2. Section 2 is called The Forgiven World. And we're going to work with Paragraph 5. Chapter 17, Section 2, Paragraph 5. Okay, y'all there? Okay. Here we go. This section, just so you know, is called The Forgiven World. The Forgiven World. I will read. We'll talk. I'll read. We'll talk. Right? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> The real world is attained simply by the complete forgiveness of the old. The world you see without forgiveness. Let me say that again. The real world is attained by simply, a, a simp attained simply by the complete forgiveness of the old. The world you see without forgiveness. Okay. This is... This is big. Right? So. The real world. Let's just start off with that. What is the real world? In A Course in Miracles, it would say... He would say... That you are living in a world of illusions. Basically. You're living in a world of a hall of mirrors. Do that. No, do that. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I should be thinner. Maybe I should be fatter. Maybe I should be smarter. Maybe I shouldn't be so smart because that will intimidate them. Maybe I should this. Maybe I should that. It's all this world of illusion, which is really the world of what? Duality. So duality is the world of illusion. So you're constantly walking through this world trying to figure out what to do, how to do it, where to do it. Um, if you should do it, if you shouldn't do it, all that other stuff. So that is the illusory world. That's the illusory world, right? It's just exactly like Pinocchio going to this, this fair where he's like, oh, I'll get this, I'll get this. And he doesn't get any of it because it's all an illusion, right? That's exactly what this world is doing for us. We're like, maybe I should be a Democrat. No, maybe I should be a Republican. Maybe I should be conservative. Maybe I should be a liberal. Wait a second. Maybe I should be a, a a monarchist. Maybe I should be a Republican. Maybe I should support the queen. Maybe I should say, oh, no, she's a horrible person because da 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 because I have to get this before we move on. <clears throat> Heather says, like I live in the past all day. It's so annoying. <laughs> I love you, Heather. It's so right. This is exactly what we do. We live in our past. And we also live in the, this like, what's gonna happen tomorrow? So I have to make sure that I do the right thing so that tomorrow is the right thing. Oh, no, I can't do that because I learned the lesson from that, so I can't do that anymore. So, oh, wait a second, I didn't learn the lesson, so maybe I shouldn't do that from the past. No, but 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 me moving forward now, I have to do the right thing now. Do you understand? Listening to me. Thank you, Steve. I feel like I live in the future. That's right, Paulette. My experience, and I've worked with hundreds of people for more than 20-something years, people, in general, people either live in the future or they live in the past, in general. Some people are more future-oriented, some people are more past-oriented. You're being pushed from the past or you're being pulled by the future. Doesn't matter. Sure, Heather. <laughs> Always worried what's going to happen. That's right. Yes, the past, the future, right? So all I'm saying here, my friends, is that when he says the real world is attained 
We need to know what the real world is. What we're talking about here, it sucks regardless. Thank you, Heather. That's exactly what I want to hear. It sucks regardless. It doesn't help. It's not helping. It's not helping. So the real world is not what we're talking about right now. Take a deep breath. The real world, and even though this sounds dualistic, it's not dualistic, it's the absolute. The absolute is attained simply by complete forgiveness of the old. And what is the old? Let's just start there. What is the old? The old is what you thought five minutes ago. The old is what you thought 10 years ago. The old is the experience you had with your children, with your, with your, sorry, your children, with your parents. The old is what happened before I was fired. I was a loser. Um, I used to be an alcoholic, blah, 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 blah. Complete. The real world is only attained by forgiveness of the old. Take a deep breath. Remember, A Course in Miracles is a psychological spiritual mind training. Let me say that again. It's a psychological spiritual mind training. So it's psychological. So you cannot keep holding on to this idea of yourself being a loser because that's in the past. You can you can do it if you want to, but you will not attain the real world if you keep going. I'm a loser. Um, people don't love me, or oh, I have to I have to heal that thing. Blah 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 blah. blah. That is literally the definition of the old. So the world you see without forgiveness. So you still haven't forgiven that thing. That past, what that person did, what you did, what you thought it should have been, whatever happens to be. Okay? Take a deep breath. Okay, what's coming up for anybody right now? And then we're going to kind of move on. Heather says complete forgiveness of the old, right? Only time, Paulette says, the only time we're promised is this moment. Mm -hmm. It's only thing, um, promise is an interesting word. I love that, Paulette, but it's not promise. It's just what is. As you and I are sitting here, you're on your phone, you're in your car, you're at home, whatever. This is it. This is it. That's it. That's it. This is it. Heather says, right. My mom calls me a loser. She will not talk to me since 2020. First of all, I'm sorry about that. That sucks. Sorry about that. That's this whole story going on there. Right, Heather? It's a whole story happening. It has nothing to do with what you are. No more tears. No, it's okay. Tears are okay. It's fine. Sometimes tears or heartbreak or whatever will, will bring you back into the present moment, which is okay. Okay, it's all good. Now, let me just say this, and we're only going to work with this one line. Do you see why I've been working with this for 40 years? Because this is one line, right? So, the real world is attained simply by complete forgiveness of the old. What is complete forgiveness? I'm going to give you something, and I'm going to say something here that might be um, confrontational to you. Or it might be like, oh my God, that's so right. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a definition of forgiveness. And uh, it's not from me. This is from the Buddha. You know, I've been doing this work for many, many, many years. But the Buddha says, true forgiveness, listen to this, is letting go 
of the idea that the situation, yourself, or others should have been any different. Take a deep breath. True forgiveness is letting go of the idea that yourself or others or the situation should have been any different than what it was. Just stop. So when you hear the real world is attained, simply, 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 it's not complicated, by complete forgiveness of the old, that's what we're talking about. The letting go of the idea that they should have been different, that you should have been different, that the world should have been different. Can you let go of the idea that that was wrong. Because once you can let go of that idea, truly let go of it, everything will change. My father didn't need to be a different father. The world doesn't need to be a different world. Politics doesn't need to be a different politics. My career doesn't need to be a different career. My financial situation doesn't need to be a different financial situation. If you can begin to start to do that, I guarantee you, look at me, everything will change. You will begin to start to see, feel, experience the real world. Not the illusion, not the illusion. Take a deep breath. Okay, let's see. Steve says, why do I feel separate of that? That just came up. Because the self is always separate. The self is built on separation. That's all, Steve. Let me just move over here. Um, Anand, that's huge. I need to hear the Buddha. Good. That that um, definition is really important, Anand. Human beings are messy creatures. Well, the, the human beings aren't messy creatures. The egoic separated mind is a very messy... Well, it's kind of... Well, it's messy, but it's... It's very simplistic, actually. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Kitty says... Heather says, is this book different from my judgmental stepfather telling me to go to church? Wait, hold on. Heather, this? This? This book? This is not a religion at all. It's not going to tell you to do anything. There is no way. This is not a religion. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not a religion. He says, thanks for that definition of forgiveness. I never quite heard it that way and definitely easier to digest in that context. And it's more real. People go, oh, forgive. You like, don't even know what that means. Right? Good, Kitty. Thank you. He's been going to a Baptist church. Okay. This is not a religion. This is not a religion. Philomena, hello. What's the title of the book? A Course in Miracles. A Course in, you can't even see mine because it's so old, A Course in Miracles. Lisa says, yes, acceptance of things that have happened and what people have done or not done. Yeah, that's the beginning. This is just the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning. Because once you start to get that, <sighs> It all opens up. 
And some of you here listening might have had that experience of that vast, like, whew, that letting go of that structured, egoic self, right? And there's this question. When you, th when you think, is your mind clear? When do you think your mind is clear? Is that what you mean, Heather? Say that again, and then I'll read Steve's. What happens to old me if I change? So what the heck do I do with the self, Max? The self isn't real, so you don't have to do anything with it. This is where it starts to get deep. It starts to get like, what the fuck? Because there is no Steven. There is no Max. That's just a character that's going on. How do you get rid of yourself? You don't get rid of yourself because yourself isn't real. So nothing needs to be getting ri gotten rid of. It's not complicated. It's actually, Steve, it's actually a very simple question, but it's, it is, you're starting, Steve, you're starting to drill into truth here. You're starting to drill into truth. Heather says, like when you're thinking, it's like meditation mode. No, because that's just a state. There's nothing wrong with meditation. Remember, this is non-duality. This is a non-duality teaching course in miracles. So there, it's not like changing your state, like going from sad to happy or from angry to peaceful, even though that's fine. There's something beyond all of that that we're talking about here, right? So when you think your mind is clear, your mind is just a vehicle. Right? So in many spiritual studies or um, philosophies, they will say you have to clear your mind, clear your mind, clear your mind. Well, you can clear your mind, but there's something that's experiencing the mind first. And that thing that's clearing the mind is what's going on. But it's not what you think it is. That's not going to make sense to the self. So I'm not going to ask if it makes sense. A lot of people, there's nothing wrong with meditation. Hear me clearly. Clearly, there's nothing wrong with meditating. There's nothing wrong with meditation at all. But as the Course in Miracles says, there is no reason to sit in solitude in meditation. In other words, you don't have to do anything to be where you already are. Take a deep breath. But you can meditate if you feel like it. But you don't need to meditate. You don't need to listen to me. You don't to need to do this because you're already there. Remember, it's the stripping away of all the illusion when you go, oh, fuck, God damn it. I fucking already was there. Are you fucking kidding me? And when that starts to happen, you're like, oh, I got the game. That's what's going on. That's truly what's happening. But we're like, whoa, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should read that. Maybe I'll... there's nothing wrong with any of this. Remember, but there will come a point at which you just go. That's kind of bullshit. Because I'm already. There's, as the course would say, there's nowhere where God ends and I begin. There's nowhere where. God begins and I end. Take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, let's see. Anand says, it's taken me years to grab A Course in Miracles, but it's happening for you now. Good for you, Anand. Nina says, you don't need to do anything. You don't. 